You know, the other night I made a video about that old saying that goes, you know, the best gun for any situation is the one that you actually have with you. And how that's kind of a stupid saying. Just because a gun is the one that you have with you doesn't mean it's going to be capable of dealing with the threat that you might find yourself faced with. Tonight, I want to take that just a step further to kind of illustrate my point and say that sometimes the gun you have with you might not only be not the best gun you could have, it might be worse than having no gun at all. Now, I'm not going to say this is a likely scenario, that it's anything that's ever going to happen to you personally or that it's ever going to happen to anyone, period, but it is something that could happen and it illustrates how that mindset is completely wrong. Now, if you're just worried about the common crook that's going to jump out from behind the bushes with a sharpened screwdriver and try to take your wallet, the guy who's not really looking for a fight and is going to run if you give him one, well, then pretty much any gun is going to serve that purpose. Any gun is going to turn the tide in your favor if you're a physically capable person. I will agree with you on that. In fact, I will agree with you that most of us are never going to need our guns, so pretty much any gun is going to do. But most of us that choose to carry a gun, we don't choose it thinking we're going to need it. We choose it to be prepared for that rare occasion where we might, even though we know it's probably never going to happen. Because of recent personal experiences, I have decided that I need to carry a capable gun, not just any gun. It has to be a capable gun. Because I was at the Clackamas Town Center right before the shooting. I left just moments before that guy came in and started shooting people. Unfortunately, a friend of mine didn't leave. She was still there. A friend and former coworker was still at the mall when the guy started shooting and she lost her life. That made me start thinking that I not only need to be prepared for the guy that doesn't want to fight, I need to be prepared for the person that does want to fight. The person that's there for a reason that has an agenda and is determined to do harm. Now, I know a lot of people say, carry the gun you're best with, but that's another stupid expression because if the gun you're best with isn't adequate, then there's no point in having it. Let's say what you're best with is a little 25 ACP semi-automatic pistol, and that's the gun you're best with. Was well, that the best gun to have in that situation? No, because if that guy's wearing anything of any substance, any molly gear, etc., and he's at 20 or 30 yards from you shooting a rifle at you, that gun may not penetrate his body. That gun is just not adequate for the situation. If he's 20 or 30 yards from you shooting at you and you shoot back with that gun, if he's wearing anything of substance on his body, that gun might not penetrate, might not be enough to stop him. In fact, it might just irritate him. And let's face it, at those distances, 20, 30 yards, most of those small guns like that are going to be mechanically incapable of delivering headshots in any type of reliable manner. Doesn't matter how good a shot you are, they're just not capable of it. So if you choose to act and your gun isn't adequate, like in that situation, it could be worse than having no gun at all. Because now, not only did you not stop the threat, but you are now his main priority. You have drawn the attention of someone that is not only determined to do harm, but is now determined to do harm to you first. And that is not a good situation to put yourself in, especially if you've got your family with you. Another illustration of this point is a story that I heard from a friend recently, a personal experience of a friend of mine. It seems his cousin's estranged husband decided to break back into their home recently. Now, she keeps a small, shiny little gun he described to me in her purse. Sounded to me like a little Jennings, etc. But she had that gun with her when he broke in. She shot him twice. Now, he is a very obese man, and this did not stop him. She hit him dead center twice, didn't stop him. He got the gun from her. And not only did he now assault her after he took her gun away from her, but her teenage son and daughter walked in on it. He shot her teenage son, who is still in the hospital. Now, this could have gone two different ways if she'd had a different gun. If she'd had a more capable gun, those two shots would have stopped him. A 357 Magnum dead center would have stopped him. That little gun didn't. And if she had no gun, he probably wouldn't have shot her son as he was fleeing because he wouldn't have had a gun. He didn't bring his own to the scene. So by having a gun that wasn't adequate for the threat she faced, she not only didn't stop the threat, she provided a weapon for the guy that later shot her son. So there you have just a couple examples of when just any old gun isn't going to do the job. And not only may the gun not be up to the job, it might make things worse. It is possible. It's something you have to consider. Now, I'm not going to be a fear monger and stay up here and say, you're likely to face this. So you need to have a big gun, lots of capacity, high caliber, etc. You make your own choices of how prepared you want to be. It's up to you to decide what threats you're going to face and how prepared you want to be. What kind of things do you want to be ready for? What kind of things do you think you don't have to be ready for? And then you make the decision of what you want to carry. And I'm totally fine if you make the decision of saying, I'm so unlikely to need a gun that I'm not going to carry it all. That's your personal decision, and I will respect that. The whole point of this video is not to tell you you have to carry something big and you have to carry something bad. It's just telling you, make your decisions in the right way. When you decide what to carry or what threats you might face, do that in a thoughtful, intellectual, open-minded way and do it with your eyes open. Don't fool yourself into thinking you're more prepared than you are. If you choose to not be prepared, then choose to not be prepared. But don't think you're more prepared than you actually, actually are.
It's all right to make concessions. It's all right to say, I don't want to carry a gun at all. It's not all right to think you're prepared and to fool yourself with platitudes. So you make whatever decisions you want to make. Like I said, just don't fool yourself. Make them in an informed and intelligent manner. But realize that now is the time to make those decisions because now is the only time that you absolutely have to make the decisions you want to make because later you might not get the chance.